Hello and welcome. My name is Meeplus, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at the fourth and final complete volume of Christopher Priest's run on Marvel's Black Panther. This bind up includes Black Panther 1998, issues number 50 to 56, subtitled Black and White, and numbered 59 to 62, subtitled Ascension, and The Crew, issues number 1 through 7. Obviously, Christopher Priest wrote throughout with fairly distinct, but stylistically pretty consistent visual teams for each part. For black and white, we have Dan Fraga, George Lucas, and Jim Calafiore on pencils, Larry Stucker, George Lucas, and Mark McKenna on inks, Jennifer Schellinger on colors and letters by Paul Tutron. On Ascension, there were pencils by Patrick Zercher and Jim Calafiore, Norm Rabmond on inks, Jennifer Schellinger on colors again, with Dave Sharp on letters. And to conclude, on The Crew, we had Joe Bennett on pencils, Crime Lab Studios, Danny Miki and Rich Perota on inks, Avalon Studios on colors, and letters by Ken Lopez, Virtual Calligraphies, Russ Wooten, and Dave Sharp. And while I generally try and profile everyone when I started reviewing these collected editions, I apparently wasn't in the mood for that sort of thing. But you'll still have to check out my review of Volume 1 to get the profile of Christopher Priest. Looking at my black creator profile for this video, I'm currently swimming along in the current of people moving from Twitter to Mastodon because I have literally no originality. That said, this has involved me recreating and building out my fellow list from scratch and one of the the people who I tracked down first was Tinu, a black disabled woman and founder of Everywhere Accessible. I've learned so much about disability accessibility and how to navigate the Fediverse with, from Tinu. Uh, currently on Mastodon.social instance, would highly recommend you join us over on Mastodon and give them a follow. Content notes for endangering a pregnant woman. Keywords that came to mind, shrews, toxic masculinity, colorism, genetic engineering, black, whatever the opposite of chosen family is, police, corruption, gangs, playing the system, and imprisonment. The synopsis over on Goodreads is, quote, Christopher Priest takes the Black Panther in a whole different direction. With T'Challa gone, who will inherit the mantle? Could it be the guy with the trench coat and guns? Kevin Casper Cole is seeking revenge on the people who hurt his family, and it will bring him into conflict with corrupt New York policemen, as well as a brutal hunter. It's the all-new Black Panther vs. the White Wolf, as a crime novel in superhero comics form begins, but nothing in a priest tale is ever black and white. End quote. As usual, one of the hardest parts of these bind-ups is just how incredibly long and sometimes fairly random they are. It took me over a week of reading to get through it all. Writing and art was fairly consistent for what I would expect from decent Marvel work. Not the best, but not the worst on a technical level. That said, this run remains not exactly my cup of tea. Scrolling briefly through the Goodreads reviews, as I do, some people were excited that it was a more serious collection with less goofiness. I would tend to disagree, because for better or for worse, humor and maybe a small dash of satire can take the edge off of things. And this is so incredibly edgy and a total power trip and so toxic. Kind of like with Lock and Key and how I momentarily doubted my horror fan credentials, this Black Panther run had me doubting my anti-hero credentials. But ultimately, I'm not even sure if Casper even counts as an anti-hero, as a cop who resents everyone around him, going with the fiction the cops are supposed to be good, perhaps he's a hero anti a cab anyway. Either way, one part I felt somewhat torn about is how much self-aware credit to give this book. Casper is, after all, living out a fairly common narrative for toxic masculinity and is a horrible person, and it doesn't really seem to go well for him. But is that just me, my opinion, and my lived experience talking, or do I think that Casper's shitty life is a deliberate critique of the stupid self-defeating choices that Casper has made? At this moment, I'm leaning towards this book believes its own hype, and my current working hypothesis is that this book might only be popular with people who want to experience this power fantasy, because in as far as anyone is rewarded in this quote, dark, quote, realistic, and quote, gritty book, it is Casper. Not that good guys always need to win or anything, sometimes the bad guys win, and the book still isn't this gross to me, but I don't really feel like going through this book again with a fine-tooth comb and addressing 
every possibility by name. And now I've spent a couple paragraphs beating around the bush, as it were. It, let's get to the point. What was my biggest issue with Casper in the book, TLDR, a Frank Miller level of hatred towards women. There's literally no nuance to the female characters, and their sole purpose is to drag down our male hero. But it's his own fault. This is self-destructive levels of toxic patriarchy. Having known guys like this, it kind of lent Casper a bit of realism. But that's not to say I trust the, those guys and their perspective further than I can throw them. Women do not exist just to torment men. And trying to present characters as such is, frankly, dangerous and hateful. Anyway, moving along to the other sort of representation, race was obviously an intersection fairly central to our story and beyond all the things that got on my nerves about the depiction of women, my non-expert opinion is that there were some interesting parts to Casper's story that it probably took a black writer to think to include. And as several others have pointed out, a contrasting vision of being black in so-called America as opposed to the black experience coming from Wakanda. There was also more Spanish used and more Muslim people included than I expected for a Marvel title. Although I cannot really say what the perspective was or of what quality this representation ended up being. I feel like ability versus disability came up briefly, but not really much to write home about. Any representation of class discuss or discussion of money mostly seems to have centered around the nagging females. Nagging, our pro or protagonist. So yeah, to conclude, generally not a fan. I'm very happy to be moving on to the next Black Panther writer, who I had previously found much more interesting, Reginald Hoodman. Bye y'all, keep reading an organized and capitalist oppression. And as always, literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. 